All right, so I know I made like three other videos already about validation libraries for server actions, but I wanted to kind of walk you through my thought process because I don't think I really described why I'm doing so many different ways to validate a form. And honestly, it's because the validation path in Next.js just seems like it's not really laid out for you. What do I mean by that? So let's just say we have like a page, okay? I'll just make another page and this has a form in it, right? So this is a server component because there's no use client. And this just has a form. Let's just go ahead and put an input. And then let's put a button here, a button submit. And then we can say like, okay, this is gonna be required. And this is gonna have a name of text. Now, when a user submits this form, let's say we wanted to call a server action and just console log the form information. So obviously you could just do an action here and we could just put a function here. We could say use server and then we'll get back the form data which will have that text in it. So if I just say console log form data dot get text, we should be able to see what the user sent back in the response, right? All right, good enough. It looks garbage, but good enough. If you go ahead and submit this, that's going to send over a request to the backend, and you can see that text get sent over right here. When it comes to validation, you can just use the built-in HTML5 form validation if you want to. So like if I were to delete this and click submit, notice that it does say please fill out this Field. But a lot of times when you're working on a system, you want custom validation. You want to maybe highlight this thing in red. You want to show an alert at the top, showing them what things they did not fill in correctly. You want to maybe put some text underneath here to explain the issues. And that's not really possible very easily with the server action. So you can achieve showing like a, a field level error validation rule here um, with server actions. But what you end up having to do is you have to bring in something called form state. So I'm going to go ahead and say const uh, empty array, I'll say use form state, go ahead and bring that in. And this is going to take in two things. First of all, it takes in a server action, which we would have to take the server action out. And let's just go ahead and say like a uh, function print text is a use server function. And we'll do this it takes in form data, form data. Okay. And so what you have to do now, is you take that server action, you pass it in as the first argument to use form state, and then you pass some initial state. So I guess say like errors is an empty object. And so when you call this, you'll get back state and you'll get back your form action. That's kind of like wrapped. Okay. And so now instead you use that form action here. And then inside of your action, you actually need to take in some previous state. So we'll say previous state uh, for right now, we'll just say any that keeps it simple. Then over here you have to return errors like this and of course this will not work in a server component so now you have to do some more refactoring to basically take all this stuff out and put it in its own file or just convert this whole thing to a client component which kind of sucks but now you can actually call use form state mm -hmm. oh wait you can't because you can't have a server action defined inside of a use form state so now you make an actions dot ts file and you can extract that server action out here but wait, there's more. You actually have to put use server at the top of the file instead of inside the function. And now it should work. Just go ahead and import this now, which I put an export here. I should be able to import this. All right, finally, is this gonna work? Finally. Okay, so now what we're trying to do is if there was no text, I'll say like uh, text is equal to this. And then I'm gonna say errors of text. If there's no text, so I don't know, the length is not defined or something like this. Then we're just gonna say text is required, otherwise we'll say undefined. And so when you submit the action, this is going to basically do some validation rules and then it's gonna return the new form state, which over here, what you can do is you can actually display based on the errors text, something like this. Okay, so let's test this out if I click submit. Um, oh, and then I have to get rid of the HTML form validation. So let's get rid of that because now we wanna do some custom validation. So now it says text is required and that gets displayed. So now we actually have validation rules, but now there's an issue with this. The issue is that if a user has slow internet connection, let's just go here and do like, a, I'm gonna refresh the page and then I'm gonna say like slow 3G. The issue with this is that the user doesn't know that there's validation issues until they have to submit then they have to wait a little bit. And then finally the response comes back saying that they did something wrong. That's not the best user experience in my opinion and most applications I've ever built you want that instant feedback to know if they didn't send in some required text. Secondly, when they start typing into the field, 
most of the applications I built, you want that validation rule to automatically re-trigger when they either click out of the input or when they're just typing. And so this is something that becomes even more difficult when you're just trying to do server actions uh, with React server components and use form state because now every time you want to revalidate, you have to send over a request to the backend. And if a user has a slow internet, that means there's just going to be a huge delay every single time they type or blur out of the input. And it's not, it doesn't work that well. So we know for a fact we want to parse and validate the inputs. Secondly, since this server action could potentially expose internal data, like let's say it's a server action that updates a user object, and that user object has a password on it, and you accidentally return user over here, you want to make sure that the outputs are also parsed and validated so you don't accidentally expose information that you want. So I think the server action is a good layer of where you should make sure that everything that's going in and out as some type of data, a data transfer object or some type of parsing going on to prevent exposing data to the front end. So what is the best approach to basically having good UX, but then also having server actions have good validation and you have like this instant revalidation when people type. Now I would say the best approach still to date is React hook form. And I would just go ahead and just use this for all your forms on every single your page. So I'm going to paste in some existing code. And the issue with React hook form is now a simple form just exploded in complexity with how much additional stuff you need, right? You have to define a form schema that defines what properties and then your validation rules, which is good. And then you also need to create a form using use form. You have to use the z.infer stuff with TypeScript, which if you're not really familiar with TypeScript, this stuff gets kind of ugly. And then you have to supply some default values. Then you have to make a submit function, which is gonna be called in this form. You have to spread the form object here. You have to make your form controls, spread your fields over that form, pass this render function, a callback, have a loading button. I, I think the developer experience for this approach just kind of sucks, honestly, but it's like kind of the best way we can validate forms, in my opinion, with Next.js. So now instead you'd still call this print text action, but I would recommend that instead of just doing the form data stuff, you want that type safety, right? So when you call this function, you want it to know that it takes in some text. So let's just go ahead and say text of string. And then we could just do this. And then we will just pass in uh, values dot text. Okay, so all this code just to have a page with a form and an input so that you get some better user experience when you try to create this, you get some validation logic that automatically pops up when you type. It goes away. That's a good user experience in my opinion. Also resetting a form. I didn't show you in the previous approach, but resetting a form in the server action with use form state, it sucks as well because you have to kind of change how you're structuring everything. So now after I submit the form, I can just reset it and everything just works how it did before. Okay. So again, the, the point of this video is I'm just trying to show you that like, you're going to try all these different approaches with like react server actions. You're going to try like use form status, use form state. And then you end up realizing, you know what? I just want a good user experience for my users. And the best way to achieve that is still just using React hook form, or maybe you can use Formic as well. A lot of people use that. But now, unfortunately, the issue is you don't have progressive enhancement anymore. If for some reason someone has a really slow internet connection, when they first load this page, they might not be able to click this button to actually submit the form until their JavaScript initializes and the hydration kind of binds React to the HTML that is sent over in the initial page load. Maybe that's a trade-off you're willing to make. Um, but just keep that in mind that until React hook form provides a way to do progressive enhancement, which I don't think they have, uh, you're not going to be able to achieve that, which honestly, I never added progressive enhancement to an app. So I think it's one of those buzzwords that's talked more about than actually like used. But now let's talk about the server action, because again, I talked about we need to validate the inputs and the outputs. How do you do that? Well, there's a bunch of different libraries you can use. So there's next safe action, which basically helps you write actions that you can parse the inputs that come in but I didn't see a way to parse the outputs. Um, maybe I'm just missing it. There's also this conform library that's kind of made for Remix, but I've tried it out. I'm not really sure if I'm a fan of it. Um, I kind of like next safe actions a little bit better. And there's also this new one that um, someone pinged me on Twitter about called ZSA. So let's try this one out. If I go ahead and just install ZSA. And basically how it works is you can call this create server action method. So let's just bring it in. And then you can define your server action. I'll do this. I'm going to rename this to print text action. And here I can specify that this needs to take in a text, which is going to be a string. And I'll just say min of one. And I'll say max of 10. Now, the thing I like about this is that your inputs are already going to be parsed. 
but they have a way to also parse your outputs, right? So if I wanted to basically make sure that this thing only ever returns a string, if I were to return a number here, I already get a TypeScript error. And I think if I were to run this, the code will actually throw an exception. So, so let's just go ahead and get the response and log it. And then I'm gonna go over here and just create it and see what we get back. So down here, we get back null, we get back some data, and then we get back an error saying output parse error because we we're trying to return a number instead of a string. So if we go back and change this to like success, everything should work fine. We don't get TypeScript errors anymore. And we get back a success message, okay? I know I've made so many videos about this, but I think honestly, this might be the path forward for my server actions. I think it's very important to validate the outputs that are coming out of your server actions. So again, like you don't leak potentially sensitive information. It's better to have a list of things that you're gonna allow to come over the wire versus just letting anything come over the wire. So definitely check out this library. I'll put the link in the description, but I think this might be my favorite way to do validation in server actions. I think it just has more capabilities than all the other approaches I've seen. It seems very similar to TRPC, where you have the ability to create middlewares, and those middlewares can run some type of like validation rules prior to running your actual action. So definitely check it out. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. Other than that, have a good day and happy coding.